Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie, and I'm back <laughs> from Asia. Yes, who's back? Back. <laughs> I am back. 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 <laughs> Welcome. Um, I am. Thank you. <laughs> I got back a few days ago. I'm very jet lagged, but I'm so happy to be back on the podcast. But big shout out to you, Deep D, and Ayana, who subbed in for me. Um, she was I'm great. just so thankful. Yeah, I actually ended up listening to the episode um, on the plane ride back, and it was so, so good. I feel like she provides a different perspective that I just can't. Yeah. Um, and, and so I really enjoyed it, but I'm so thankful that we were able to make it work. Originally, mm -hmm. we thought that I could record the recap episode, but with the time difference and I actually ended up getting really, really sick in Japan. I had a very close relationship uh -huh. with, um, my hotel toilet <laughs> out there and, I just, I, I didn't think that I could sit through an hour to an hour and a half recording. So um, mm. I'm very grateful for Ayana and also you for just steering the ship as always. But um, yeah, I think I got like food poisoning or something. Dude, that so. sucks. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But you had a good trip in general, though. <laughs> Oh, yes. It was amazing. So for those of you who haven't been following along, um, I went to Singapore, Vietnam, Japan, and South Korea with my family. Um, and it was really the trip of a lifetime. I don't think I will ever go to so many countries in such a short time span. So I was out there for about 16 days, but it was amazing. Um, my favorite place, though, was Hanoi, Vietnam like wow the just like the culture there is so beautiful um it's just like nothing that i've ever experienced and so i highly recommend everyone makes a trip out there i'm definitely going to be posting recommendations suggestions on my instagram stories on my personal instagram probably in the next few weeks and so definitely go there if you you know want some want some tips on traveling over to to asia yeah, it looked so beautiful. Like Vietnam, like the nature is just so stunning. It reminded me of Avatar. <laughs> Do you, have you ever watched Avatar with like the oh yeah the yeah giant? Yes, I was like, oh my gosh, Vietnam has yeah. been on my list. So I'm definitely gonna. You should come back with me. We can just do a little Vietnam trip. <laughs> no, I highly recommend. The city of Hanoi is just amazing i don't know another way to like explain it but it's so lively um the locals are very very nice um it's not the most like foreigner friendly in that like it takes a while to like know how to like navigate throughout the city but yeah we found help from the locals very easily um but the avatar like like yeah, mountains like you saw mountains. on my instagram stories yes. that was in Ningbing, which is um i think like two hours out of hanoi Beautiful. freaking like like it doesn't it was, even feel like it's real yeah. you know like it, oh no gosh, I, like. I was like gobsmacked like mm -hmm. i i've never seen anything like <laughs> that before <laughs> i like that word <laughs> i know i've actually never used that word before like I why know, did that like, come out of my you, mouth where, where the fuck did you pull that out <laughs> of gobsmacked i was gobsmacked <laughs> um uh, but yeah hopefully ooh, i'll be posting yeah. even more from the trip in the yeah. upcoming weeks i've kind of taken a social media break just because i wanted to enjoy time with my family um yeah. but i'm so excited to share everything with everyone so just, you know, check out my Instagram, <laughs> not a plug for it. I'm just saying yeah. like, if you want to go to the places I did, um, I'll definitely be posting a lot. Um, but switching gears, how is everything in Chicago? Chicago, you know, nothing has changed. So we're, I'm excited that you're back though. I feel like usually we talk so much and I was like, oh, well, you know, if she's traveling, let her do her thing. But it was yeah. weird not to have you here. But I'm glad to be glad you're back and it's a lot colder. You know, it's supposed to snow in Chicago tomorrow. It's a freezing. Ooh, I it's just like we, love that for yeah, us. I know. Oh. It's like we skipped fall and went straight to winter. So here we are. I know. What's new? I feel like that's such a Chicago day. We have like a week of fall and then it's like, boom, winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like I'm currently in Texas. Um, I came here for a wedding. So, you know, we're, we're both like just on the road and you know, doing things. I don't even know when I'm going to see you next. I'm not going to see you for like 10 days. No, next week. <laughs> oh yeah. We have some events next week. 
It feels like a long time. I know. It feels like I haven't. I don't know. I feel like we haven't seen each other for months, even though it's It's only been a month. But we talk so often that when we go through even like a week without seeing each other, it feels like... So I, I know <laughs> yeah, it is very, very weird. If you yeah. guys are like just listening to our newest episodes, Deep D and I actually live in the same building. And yeah. so like I will borrow dresses from Deep D. And so like I see her way more yeah, than mm-hmm. you guys think I actually do. Like I probably see her <laughs> almost every day. Um, yeah. So uh, which which is great for this podcast, honestly. Um, I specifically missed hearing your opinions about the finale and reunion because I know you have a lot of them, but, and a lot of people have been asking, like, obviously everyone loved Ayana's perspective, but they're like, what, what is Natalie's take? So I'm excited for the people to hear your take on on the latest episodes. I feel like between the two of us, Mm -hmm. I feel like I am the most critical and judgmental and unhinged one. And so you are a little unhinged, but I like that. I like that. Someone DM'd us on out of the pots and they're like, Natalie's opinions are always like an unpopular take. And I, (laughs) I have a lot of takes from watching the wedding episode, the finale and the reunion episode. Um, And I will be sharing them next week because I just, they're probably very unpopular takes, but I just had a lot of thoughts. I mean, like we have been in their shoes before, Um, you know, sitting at the reunion, going to that altar and just, Ooh, I don't know. Like this cast for me is just not doing it. And so it's, it's hard to get attached you know, to this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do have thoughts, but we are doing a final thoughts episode next week where we just kind of wrap our recap of love is blind season five. So you don't want to miss it because I'm I'm excited. I'm going to be sharing all of my thoughts. (laughs) We need to do this every (laughs) season. Just do like a summary recap of everything that we've learned, what we think is edited, what we think is not. And, you know, based on our interviews and our sources, mostly Natalie's sources, Mm. let me just say, (laughs) (laughs) like what we learned, like just summarize everything into one little episode. So I think it'll be a really fun one. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. But for this episode, we have a really special interview. We will be talking to Johnny from season five. And if I'm being honest, I came out of that interview with her just really understanding her more. And if there's anyone I am attached to from this season now, it's definitely her. Like, I just feel like I could relate to her a lot more than I did watching her on the show. And I really enjoyed my interview with her. And I think you guys will too, because she spills and she clears up a lot. Yeah, no, it was a really uh, interesting episode. And like you said, Natalie, I think watching her, there's like a lot of things that she did or some of the actions. I was just like confused as to why she Mm -hmm. did them but it was really nice for her to hear the context and to understand what was happening behind the scenes that wasn't shown and so i think it was it was an enlightening enlightening episode to to listen to a hundred percent yeah so here we go we're going to introduce johnny from love is wine season five We have a special guest on this week's episode of Out of the Pods, Johnny Moray. Welcome to Out of the Pods. Hi, thank you. Hi. Hi, Johnny. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, I feel like I kind of know y'all already. I feel like y'all probably get that a lot. (laughs) Like I feel like I already know y'all and I have never met y'all. It's funny because I feel like we know you to some extent, but I'm super excited (laughs) to get to know you even further today. Yes. Well, I was going to say, I feel like, Johnny, you and I know each other pretty well because you you and I have chatted a little bit via DMs um, when your season was coming out. So I'm so excited that you are on Out of the Pods and we are very honored to have you. We always ask this question, though, for everyone from Love is Blind who comes on our podcast. But how did you get casted on Love is Blind season five? So... um... A casting producer actually slid in my DMs on Instagram. 
Interesting. Um, my, yeah, my working theory is I think they found me on the dating apps and then my name's pretty unique. So I think he found me on Instagram and um, DM'd me on Instagram and he sent me a voice message actually and was like, hey, have you ever heard of Love is Blind? And I was like, yeah, who hasn't? <laughs> and I thought, um, I thought, it, I think everyone probably thinks that might be a scam. Um, so I thought yeah. it might be a scam, but it was like, he's not asking for my credit card information or my social security number. So <laughs> until it gets to that point, I'll follow through. So I sent um, a voice message back and then we had a phone call and it all just kind of progressed from there. Wait, so why did you decide to do the show when you got the opportunity? Um, to me, it made a lot of sense because I don't know... Honestly, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but I don't think people really understand this, that this show is almost like a matchmaking service. Like these aren't just random people. You take a very long and extensive compatibility test. And I've never used a matchmaker before. So I was like, this sounds amazing to me. Like you're going to match me with someone who you think I share values with. Um, that sounds like a much better <laughs> alternative to the dating app. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to say I didn't have my reservations. My first, um, voice message back to him was, I don't know how I feel about being on TV. I don't know how I feel about being a villain. Mm -hmm. And yeah. his response, yeah, his response was, well, the villains from past seasons are engaged to really amazing people now. So it all worked out for them. Um, like not, not necessarily on the true. show, not on the show, no, but post true. the show. Yes. <laughs> And so yeah. I was like, okay, he's making some valid points. Um, what do I have to lose? We've talked about it on this podcast before in that like it's not random people that are chosen for the show. There is that compatibility factor and we go through multiple yeah. tests to make sure that there are potential matches for everyone. Yeah. Who do you think your potential matches were? Like paper matches is what we, Deep D and I call them, like in yeah. that they like our perfect matches on paper. So... This is one of this is why you see me getting confused because I realized after Izzy ended things with me that Chris was my perfect paper match and I was like shit. Mm. <laughs> I'm like I literally said I date slightly younger guys who are like very nice and like dependable and I want them to love animals and I want them yeah he just Chris and I both agree, which we actually said this at the reunion and they cut it. We both agree we were our number one compatibility match in the pods. Um, but they, they cut that out real quick. Oh, man. <laughs> of course. Um, it doesn't fit the narrative. <laughs> but the, yeah. So then Chris, um, I actually, there was this guy named Connor who he was actually, um, his, at the end of the day, his main match was Miriam, who y'all know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, but Connor was one of the people the first day he was towards the end of the day and I was really tired. And I think it was the same kind of mentality I almost had with Chris where I was like, he seems really nice. I don't know if there's the chemistry for me. Um, but then looking back, I was like, oh, he was he was one of the nice guys. He was one of the good ones. Um, maybe I should have given him a chance. Deep D, didn't you think that Nick Thompson was your paper match? So Nick from our season who married Danielle. But <laughs> I, mean, I didn't think that someone said that to me. A producer said that to me. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> I wish. I always, after, so after filming wrapped and y'all saw how much of a mess that was, I was like, I wish a producer would just tell me who my paper matches were supposed to be so I could see if I want to talk to that person in real life. Like, at least yeah. we're compatibility yeah. matched already um but yeah no i think i i had three i would say three very strong connections um and you only see two of them but but izzy was always i guess my strongest what i felt at the time was my strongest emotional connection yeah actually let's get into it so your two matches um notably on the show obviously are izzy and chris mm -hmm. and it seems like they're yeah. pretty opposite so can you walk us through why those were your top people like what happened in the pods so the thing is they seem opposite but like what i was hearing was kind of similar so okay leading up to going on the show um I had this phrase stuck in my mind, which is 
relationships aren't 50 50 they're 100 100 um mm -hmm. because if you get into yes. a 50 50 relationship it's transactional but if you you should be giving your all your partner should be giving their all um mm -hmm. and this, this is like my oh, mantra I love that. going yeah <laughs> I was like going to the show, I was like, this is my mantra, 100, 100. So the first day, Izzy was my second date, I think. I walk in and I'm like, what are you looking for? And he goes, I'm looking for a partnership that's 120, 120. And I was like, oh, what? I was like, not okay. only is he, yeah, I was like, not only is, is he saying like what my mantra has been going into this, but he's like upping it a little. He's like saying, I'm going to give more than my all and I want my partner to give more than my all. And I was just like, Clearly, like y'all are saying, I was like, clearly this is a paper match. <laughs> like we probably put this yeah. in our little compatibility yeah. test. Like yeah. I want a partner who's going to meet me, like give their all. Like I'm always the caretaker. I don't want to be that anymore. I want someone who's going to be there for me. And we were yeah. both saying that. Um, so I think what you see, what's weird is like watch when I watch the show, I see the hallway moments where Izzy's like more like the party boy and like, they're like, woo, -hoo! like just like <laughs> in the hallway. Yes. But that's that's not what I was getting. What I was getting in the pods was like I someone who he was talking about going to therapy. He was talking about wanting a dependable he was saying all the things that I had been saying. And so I very quickly got wrapped up in what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and As so you Izzy do. Yes, Izzy was my in number one from yeah, exactly. From day one, Chris, the first day, he was actually like my number eight. Okay. Um, I was like, he seems nice. This was, it was like a very, it was a comfortable conversation. Um, seems like a nice guy. I didn't really have anything else to go off of. I couldn't even remember what he did because it's like commercial project manager for commercial development. So I went in the next time and I was like, what, what is that you do? <laughs> Say all those very general words again, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Write them. <laughs> like I didn't write them down. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, so Chris was the slow burn, which I now recognize is what I identify more as a healthy dynamic in, mm -hmm. in the pause and in real life. Um, you should be slowly getting to know one another. Chris, or Izzy is what I would describe as... Um, he was an immediate emotional reaction that I now recognize as anxiety. <laughs> mm. um, I was, mm, I was interesting. Yeah. I was confusing. I think there, there's this quote that's like um, chemistry is based off um, your nervous system's history. Yes. So because I have a back, yeah, it's like, chemistry is your nervous system recognizing something familiar. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened with Izzy. And I was like, but because he was saying the right things, like the 12120, and I was feeling the emotional reaction, I was thinking, oh, they found me my perfect compatibility match. Exactly. <laughs> and, yes. And I, yeah, and I had blinders on, um, big blinders, which we can get to all that. So yeah, I think you kind of nailed it, though. It's like, that's exactly what dating in a nutshell is, too. <laughs> is like, you're like, you get so excited, but then you start to understand that their actions are so different than their words. And the pods are like, so frustrating sometimes, because it's so easy to be whoever you want to be in the pods and say whatever you want to say, but like the actions do not align you know, later down the road. And I was just going to, like, I've heard, like, I heard y'all discuss it with Renee and I think maybe some other episodes, but like, I know the whole premise is like, is love blind? And me looking at this experiment, like, I agree with y'all, like, love is not blind. Like, it has nothing to do with physical appearance. Love is not blind in the sense that I can't go in a room and talk to someone giving me their sales pitch about who they are as a person um mm -hmm. and choose who i'm going to be married to based off that because it doesn't take very long to realize like you are not the person you have to be very self-aware like that's why i walked in and i was like hey i'm not that great in some ways 
because I didn't want to give <laughs> I didn't want to give my sales pitch. I wanted to say, look, this is who I am. Like, do you like me for who I am? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of people go in there like, this is who I would like to be perceived as. Yes. Um, and then you pick them based off that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that Deep D and I kind of went through that. I think, you know, it, it's tough when you are dating other people men who are either really good conversationalists or they're painting that picture like that they're a really good fit for you or that they're someone that they don't actually end up being in real life. Yeah. Um, I think that Deep G and I went pretty honest. Like I remember someone asked me like, how would you rate yourself like out of 10, like in terms of looks? And I'd be like a solid fucking four. And like, you know, you're just <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're you're the I know, but I was like, person I know. <laughs> but in my, I, in my eyes, I'm like, I'm not going to over ever oversell myself. No. If anything, I'm just going to try to be as like honest and as like, this is who I am. And if anything, like yeah. undersell myself. Cause like, yes. yeah. wait, Natalie, so do you, have you seen, uh, that's why, uh, some women put like not as attractive photos of, of themselves on dating apps. Be like, meet me at my worst. Do you remember? I, do that. <laughs> that I did, did, did that. I guess I should, I should clarify. I did that because I was so scared of meeting up with someone from a dating app and then thinking I was less attractive than my photos. So I was like, I'm going to put yeah. what I think is reasonable or like below reasonable for my appearance. Yes. Quick pause here because we need to give a shout out to HelloFresh. If y'all have been following along, you know Natalie and I are in our wellness era. <laughs> 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 Which means eating out less and cooking at home more. That's why we've been loving HelloFresh. It's so convenient because HelloFresh does all the shopping for you and does the meal prep. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook. You also get these amazing pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. It's so easy. It is so easy. I 100% agree. If you guys need recommendations on what to get from HelloFresh, my favorite items are from their limited time fall flavors line. So I just had their apple cider cake with caramel sauce, which was Ooh. unbelievable. And then also their barbecue pulled pork nachos. And we're going to share a code for you guys, which is still very much active. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 out of the pods and use code 50 out of the pods for 50% off plus free shipping. Deep D, can you repeat that for our listeners? Yes, that is hellofresh.com slash 50 out of the pods and use code 50 out of the pods for 50% off plus free shipping. No, but I want to, I do, I do want to hit this at some point because I also am not, to be honest, like I have confidence from like, I build my confidence from keeping promises to myself. Um, mm. I don't build my confidence for my physical appearance. Like, I don't think I'm that attractive. Um, I'm very aware of my double chin. I'm like very aware of like, everyone has those things that they pick out about themselves. Yeah. And so I want to get into this about the Stacy claiming the physical appearance stuff because yes. none of that's true, but I was like, I don't know how much time we have, but I want to hit. Uh, absolutely. No, <laughs> we are going to ask you about that. We were going to yeah. ask you about that for sure. Um, and, you know, we we can actually go right into it. You know, um, you know, Stacy did make that Instagram post after the reunion episode drops mm -hmm. that, you know, stated um, you bashed her as a person mm -hmm. as well as her physical appearance. And one of the things that she also said in that Instagram post is oh. that you said, quote, if Izzy chooses Stacy, he's going to be disappointed at reveal because she's not hot End quote, you know, is that true? Did you say those things about her? No. And I have, I have multiple thoughts about this. Um, so I have some, I have two overarching thoughts and then we can get into the specifics. Overarching thought number one is people will rewrite history to avoid accountability. Mm. Overarching thought two is um, she has never, not once, not one single time, tried to come to me privately and have a conversation. 
She has publicly and privately admitted that everything she's basing her opinion on is the talk of other people and rumors, but never mm, once has yeah. tried to ask me what I said. Three, she did not address this at the reunion, which, um, which we filmed prior to the episode airing of her, um, her and I's, I will call it kindly a discussion at the barbecue. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. we filmed the reunion before those episodes aired. Um, so she did not see what the public reaction was. I'll just let people draw the conclusions from that, that they will. And then, so those are the main, like overarching conclusions. The, um, I have specifics as to what I think she's basing these um accusations off of because i'm assuming it was a game of telephone and she heard some things and i know the things i said so i know what i think she heard if that makes sense um so i can get into the specifics of that um the day before izzy broke up with me um was the first day we discovered we went to the same gym um mm. so he he named the gym and the address and we are both like avid gym goers. So we were like, oh, we could have run into each other in person before, like not known. And so Izzy goes, um, what if you're my gym crush? Telling me one, he has a gym crush. And like two, <laughs> I was already like, great. I'm already competing with some woman. I don't even know. No, but he goes, Izzy goes, what if you're my gym crush? And um, this whole time, I had not told him a single thing about my appearance, not skin color, hair color, eye color, race, anything. I was I was all in for the experiment. Um, and my name is kind of weird. So I was like, maybe they'll assume I'm white, but no one will really know. Um, anyways, so he says, what if you're my gym crush? And I said, what does she look like? And he goes, blonde. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, clearly not me, and he likes blondes. Um, and then it was not long after that, it was the next day he broke things off with me. Um, and so to me, I'm like, we had had the other discussions about um, like my ex, but that was all before that. So to me, I was like, it, I actually feel like he broke things off with me because I wasn't blonde. Um, so the conversation I walk into with Renee, Taylor, and Aaliyah that they only showed a part of, I actually said, I think Izzy ended things with me over superficial reasons. I was like, I think he thinks I'm not going to be his type physically. And I was like, and that's not what this experiment is about. Like, I've kept everything under wraps so long. And the second I revealed I was brunette, he was like, no. Mm -hmm. And then Renee actually said, Carter told me that Izzy said he likes blondes and that he was going to end things with you because you weren't blonde. Interesting. Yeah. So huh. I was like, I was kind of validated. That's why whenever you see me being like, I, when I say like, I feel like he's not going to be happy with her. I was saying, I feel like actually emotionally compatibility wise, I didn't think they were going to be compatible based off who I knew Stacey to be in lounge and Izzy to be in the pods, which I've already apologized for. Like, I do understand it's not my place to say those things, but I did believe those things to be true. I think I said them in a way that was like, mm, I got broken up with and now I'm like pissed off. So like mm -hmm. people read that a certain way. Um, but Renee actually validated like, yeah, Carter told me he likes blondes. Like Stacy said, she was a cheerleader of blondes. Mm -hmm. and I heard he, Stacy said that in the pods a lot like yeah about how she was a cheerleader and stuff yeah so that's when you see me getting upset it's because I wasn't bashing Stacy's physical appearance I was saying I think Izzy picked her for superficial reasons but I mean if you want to qualify that I guess you could say on like a general scale that I'm commenting on Stacy's appearance which I'm guessing is what someone went back and told her like as a game of telephone. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Johnny was saying, cause I did, I did say, I don't think, well, 
Renee was the one who said they're not going to last a month, but I did agree. And honestly, on a personal level, I do think it's okay to see a couple and say, I don't think they're that compatible. I don't think that's actually that insane of a remark to say. So that was my viewpoint. I was like, I don't know if they're actually like, I think he picked her because she's blonde. I think he's going to give a little ways into this and be like, damn, I had a stronger emotional connection with Johnny. Did I mess things up? Mm-hmm. When Stacy actually came at me at the barbecue, it was not about the thing she's now claiming about physical appearance. She said, I heard you don't like my character. And that's when I said, you're right. I said that. I don't like your character. Like I told you things and I feel like you used it in the pod to go for Izzy. And I find that deceitful. And I owned Mm -hmm. up to all that. And they just, all they showed was me saying, I think you're deceitful. I think you're, (laughs) but like, I was owning up to what she was accusing me of. Um, and then now she's coming up with a new argument because people didn't back her on that, you know? Um, yeah. You know, even though I'm not sure if it's the right thing, I think that when we make statements about other people's connections in the pods, it is just the name yeah. of the game of being in the pods. We saw Bliss do it to Irina, mm-hmm. right? In her dates with Zach. She made comments yeah. about Irina's character. And you know, Mm -hmm. and like I said, like Shayna made comments about my relationship with Shane. And quite honestly, I think that they were valid based on her perception. And also the fact that my relationship with Shane was impacting her relationship with Shane in the pods. Like it's just the name of the game. And I feel like Stacey kind of has to like, let that go. (laughs) Um, but one thing I will also say is you hear that from Stacey a lot. She, is always like, I heard it from someone. I heard it from someone. I heard it from someone. And it's like, be a big girl and have the conversation with you, you Johnny. Yeah. One, she she has never, yeah, she has never tried to have the conversation, um, which is the main thing that bothered me because I would have told her, like, I think what she's talking about is, well, I mean, we don't like each other. So like the character comments, I did tell her to her face. If she wants to ask about the physical characteristics I will say it was about her being blonde and telling them that she was a cheerleader and so I thought I mean if anything I think that was more a shot at Izzy I was saying I think he's choosing her for superficial reasons um but I guess my final thought on the entire thing is for me let's assume I said the worst about Stacy let's assume I said she was ugly let like literally let's assume I said she's ugly Izzy's not going to be happy with her I don't think the way she approached me at the barbecue was appropriate I don't think her her coming at me saying you're a shit person um everyone here hates you leaving me there to cry I was told it doesn't even show this Izzy and Stacey danced out of the barbecue they were so pleased with themselves for shutting me down I'm gonna get emotional they were so pleased with them they were I'm sorry I know like this whole okay. show and everything I've been very emotional but it was very hard um but my whole point know. was let's assume I did the worst let's assume I actually did what they say I did sorry. Um, I don't I don't think anyone deserves no, didn't deserve that at all shit <laughs> sorry I don't okay take your time okay yeah so my whole deep breath okay my whole point is uh, let's assume I actually said Stacey was ugly (laughs) that I don't think I I mean I don't think they were compatible so that I stand by but I would never say the things about the physical appearance because of what I said earlier I think that presupposes that I think I'm hot shit which I do not (laughs) Um, so I would never talk down on someone else's appearance. Um, but assuming I did, I don't think the way they came at me is excusable um, in any way. And I actually, um, I was expecting Stacey to give me a fake apology. <laughs> Me too. She should have. I, I, I was thought... really hoping. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, like, actually, at the reunion, I saw that Izzy at least was like, hey, like, 
I shouldn't have spoken to you in that way. That's what I appreciated mm-hmm. him saying. I really was hoping that Stacy would do the same thing. Watching her behavior at the barbecue was actually extremely disappointing. I wanted to really root for her, but like, there's just moments that I'm just like, that's just not how you treat another human being. And it's not no. okay. Like telling somebody you're a shit person, who are you to say anything? And who is everybody? You know what I mean? Like that just like bothered me so much. And yeah. I'm like, fuck that. Honestly, fuck that. That's yeah. not acceptable. And you know what? I was so, I think you, I was caught off guard. I was like, you see me like, does anyone else hear this? Is anyone else going to say like, this is insane? But like, my main one of my main regrets is like very much internalizing what they were both saying to me at the barbecue which is why i even now like i'm breaking down because i'm putting myself back in that situation but i'm a lot stronger Mm -hmm. now but my main regret is internalizing what they said and them making me question my own Mm self-worth um which is what they wanted I think and that's maybe too too hard of a shot, but I wish I would have been like, no, that's not true. You're not going to tell me who I am. You're not going to tell me I'm sketchy. Um, but I'd just been through everything else with the pods and being kind of rejected twice and my self-worth was low. Um, so it's not like I was in a very strong place as far as my confidence went to be like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to let you tell me these things. Yeah. Before we continue, I talked about this on my personal Instagram stories last month about how I started experiencing weekend and thinning hair, especially after our season came out last year because of the stress I was under. So I actually started using Nutrafol last year and it has helped make my hair thicker with less shedding. It has just been so great. Nutrafol is actually the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, which is why I also use it. Natalie, I have a fun fact for you. Did you know that in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol's women's hair growth supplement for six months? It's actually a crazy number of women. That's a really cool fact. So please take the first step to visibly thicker and healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code out of the pods. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code out of the pods. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code out of the pods. It's actually yeah. really sad. Stacy didn't even give you a fake apology for her delivery. Um in the way she spoke to you at the interview. And I think it says a lot about her character that she can't recognize what she did was wrong. And the way she communicated how she felt at that moment was completely wrong. And I think it really does. It's a reflection of her immaturity as a person. I did um, have a follow-up question to that. Um, I would see, say that fight between you, Izzy and Stacy at the barbecue, like, were you surprised at how hard they came at you or the, like, kind of like this vendetta that Izzy had against you? Yeah, yeah. Um, So to me, like kind of how I've been explaining Izzy and I's relationship, when he ended things with me, I was hurt, but I actually felt like the blinders fell off. And I was like, oh, that wasn't my paper match. Like that wasn't the person I was most compatible with. Um, And then this is not the the purpose of love is blind but when I saw Chris in person I was also very physically attracted to Chris like we met and there was so much emotional and physical chemistry that I was like to me Izzy didn't matter which Mm -hmm. I don't think people really understand that I was Chris and I were both like oh shit like we were supposed to be each other's matches um so we met at the airport and we continued dating from there so my perspective was I'm going into this barbecue with Chris and it's going to be a little awkward and they're probably going to want to want me to have a conversation with Izzy, but I'm just going to wish him the best. Um, and you, when you say they, do you mean producers? Like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm like, when they invited me back, I knew they wanted me. Izzy and I had never spoke in person before that day. Um, so like, I'm not going to act like I didn't know they wanted 
me to talk to Izzy. Like I knew I was probably going to have to have that conversation. But to me, um, I was I was genuinely in love with Chris. I don't know if people really understand that from the edit because he looks like my second choice. But at that time, um, I was very all in. Yeah. And I was trying to make things up to him. Um, so when we went back, I was actually like, okay, well, I thought Chris and I were going to end up together. And I was like, this will be good because we can go back together. And then people won't be surprised when we're like married or engaged like two years from now on our mm -hmm. own timeline, because on the show, it ends up, it ends with us breaking up. So I was like, people are going to be very confused <laughs> when we're like, Hey, we're in a relationship. Yeah. Um, so, so I was like, we're going to go back, um, just be cordial with everyone. And I think you can kind of see that when I walk into that conversation with Izzy, I'm like, you're happy with Stacey. I'm happy with <laughs> Chris. Can we move on from this conversation? Like that was what I thought it was going to be. And it was not <laughs> at all. I was 0% yeah, no. prepared for, um, um, the way because I, I, people also, they dropped this, those episodes over two weeks, but that was one night for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have that conversation with Izzy and I'm like, whoa, which the, what they cut out of that conversation was what he was actually mad about. What he yeah, was what was he? But what he was accusing me of is having multiple number ones what it's so he was to, does he know how the pods work like yeah <laughs> no well, the whole purpose well so they cut all that out but what he was saying was oh you had me as number one you had josh as number one you had chris as number one and i was like no i was like what i was like well, well that's why you hear me say you were always my number one i'm still making shit up to chris for being my number two like everyone's aware of like i hate this like ranking of people but everyone's aware of my ranking Mm -hmm. but looking back I'm like it shouldn't have mattered to him who my number one was but he was coming at me very hard about him thinking he wasn't my only number one so then I walk out of that conversation talk to Chris you see me kind of like break down there um and then so much is happening at that barbecue that at some point I'm talking to Lydia and Maris is there and Maris goes oh, look, like Chris is inside and I look and it's Chris and then Izzy sitting next to him and Stacy was standing over him, like gesturing like this. Mm -hmm. And I had just had that conversation with Izzy where he was basically telling, I mean, he, he said, you're sketchy as fuck. And I'm like, why is this couple on either side of my boyfriend um, like going in at him right now? And so I didn't know if they were I didn't know what was happening, but I just had just known what had just happened to me. So I walked in, Maris literally goes, you need to go support him. And I was like, you're right. I need to go support him. <laughs> um, so I walked in and that's why you see me being like, is everything okay here? I did have my assumptions <laughs> on what was happening. Um, do you, and, Johnny, yeah. do you think that, do you think that Izzy's anger was, not even anger. Do you think that the reason why he came at you like that was because he was protecting P Chris? Because that's his whole thing. He's like, oh, well, Chris is my really good friend and I'm looking out for him. And no. that's why. And then he you kissed know, you. I like I... <laughs> <laughs> we'll I hate <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I hate to assume anyone's yeah. attentions. I do. I hate to assume but if I was going to guess, that would be at the bottom of the list of the reasons why. Yeah. Like I could guess a whole a whole host of reasons why. Um, what I think would be maybe, your first guess. <laughs> I, um, I mean, I've heard a lot of the speculations now, and like, I think my main guesses would be that either he was trying to make Stacy feel comfortable by shitting on me. That's what it seems or like. That was my guess. Yeah, it's either it's it's either that or there were unresolved emotional feelings on his end. Actually, I had a I had an interview that night that they didn't show, and they said, "Why do you think?" Because I was distraught, <laughs> um, and they were like, "Why do you think Izzy and Stacy came at you so hard?" And I remember like looking out like over the whole like pool, 
and looking back and just being like, I think they're fighting. Like, that's all I know. I was like, I know there are internal issues within their relationship because I don't know why if they were happy and good that I would walk in here tonight and be attacked that hard. So I'm like, I don't know if it was to make Stacy feel secure. I don't know if Izzy was questioning his choice. I like there are a whole host of reasons. All I knew, I was like, all I can tell you is I can assume they are not doing well between the two of them because I don't know why you would come at me that hard if you were. I agree. And interestingly enough, they did get into a fight that that night, it seemed like, right after the barbecue. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's what I thought, too, that he well, my assumption was that he wanted to give some sort of validation to Stacy or make her feel more comfortable considering you were in the room mm-hmm. because she does make a comment on the show um, during their fight after mm-hmm. the barbecue where she's all like, well, something about you about like, well, you know, like she was mm-hmm. like someone to you she says that to izzy um so she mentioned yeah. she mentions like that she has some sort of insecurity um kind of about you and so yeah and the, and the way izzy you know kind of like keeps saying you know he got turned on by the way like stacy put you down like it was kind of all sick so um i i always assumed it had to do yeah yeah that was not a good look for them and i think that's where really the public tide changed on people's view about Izzy and Stacy. I think in that moment, especially for me, that's when I was like, yeah, they don't really have great character. Um, it's, it's super interesting though about Izzy, you know, I, I know he uses the reason like he's just trying to be a good friend to Chris, but I hate to bring this up and fast forward you and Izzy <laughs> kissed, um, you know, mm-hmm. a few weeks after you and, um, and Chris ended and after filming ended, um, but speaking about that kiss, what was also very interesting is the fact that that even happened because Izzy seems like he has this like ongoing mm. vendetta against you. You know, you kind of see that at the reunion where yeah. he, he always has Stacy's back, you know, um, but then he also says that and he, with the statement. Yeah. And with the statement, he po- reposted her story or her yeah. post and said, mic drop. I was like, what? <laughs> But I was Confusing. like, why would you kiss someone that you, you know, clearly don't like? He even said at the reunion, you guys stayed friends. But I was like, uh, it doesn't it seem like you guys are friends. So what's your status with him? Like, what happened? Yeah. So, Ooh, so, great question. Yeah. The story doesn't make sense because I think Izzy's telling inconsistent stories, to be honest. Um, so on my end, it had been multiple weeks since. Uh, the first time, okay. First time I met up with Izzy, it had been multiple weeks since I had found out Chris had cheated on me. It was the week Stacy said no to him at their wedding. That was on a Sunday. That Saturday, um, I went to the bar that's walking distance from my house. Aliyah was in town. Cause she's a traveling nurse. She had moved to San Francisco. She was staying in my guest room. So Aliyah and I were like, okay, let's walk to the bar. It's a Saturday night. We have nothing to do. I'm trying to entertain my friends. We walk in and like the entire male cast is there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. what is my life? Yeah. So they were all out celebrating someone's birthday. Um, Chris <laughs> is there. I'm just like, okay, not having that conversation. Izzy actually wasn't there when we first walked in. I'm mm. like, Phew. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, not after that barbecue. I know that feeling. Natalie, you and I know that yeah. feeling so well. <laughs> After, yeah, I was like, that's the, literally the only time I've talked to him in person. Um, so he's not there. I'm like, okay, we're good. I was like, Aaliyah, let's go to the other side of the bar. Let them do their thing. Um, what happened at the time, Lydia was kind of like cool with Aaliyah and I. So she came over with Milton. They were together, married, obviously. Um, so they come over. The rest of the male cast kind of funnels over. Um at one point, Izzy, yeah, exactly. It was, I was like, are they filming? This is so awkward. <laughs> um, but <laughs> so it's the rest of the male cast. Um, Izzy does show up and I'm like, I just kind of like scoot to the other side of the group. I'm like making my space. Um, and then he pointedly came up to me mm. and he said, yeah, he said, he said, do you want to talk? 
and I, to me, I'm thinking we've talked once and that did not go so well. Yeah. <laughs> like it did not go, did not go so well. But one thing about me is like, I'm not like, I will be emotional. I will do my thing, but like I'll step up to the plate and like try. And I'm so I'm like, okay, let's have this conversation. So he's like, okay, come outside. We go outside, we're talking, he's asking me about the rumors he's heard about whatever, like, did you have other number ones? Did you have this? I was like, no, it was always you. Oh like, my I think gosh. There were going around. Like, Who cares? Yeah. It was a, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Who cares? Well, well, he was trying, he was trying to mend things. Oh, like it got was it. clear. Um, and I think if, if I'm being fully honest with myself, I think my self-esteem was very low um because of everything i would just been through so i was i think i was still trying to like prove myself prove yourself i'm like yes. i'm like i'm like just see that. me for who yeah i'm like just see me who who I, for who i really am like you're listening yeah. to all this talk i said it on the show i'm like it sounds like you're basing your opinion off talk like why don't you just talk to me and see what you think um yeah so we're sitting outside, we talked for maybe 15 minutes and he was like, oh, you don't seem that sketchy. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> thank you. You're like, like that's what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah. PTSD, oh, yeah. yeah, I was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, so we're talking, and then we have like an hour long conversation. I think he said that at the reunion. We, did, we were sitting outside for like 45 minutes to an hour, just like clearing the air. And at the end he was like, so what do you think about us pursuing something and I said I'm gonna be honest I don't really trust you um and like we're gonna have to work through that and I I told him um I was like I'm not gonna sleep with you because <laughs> yeah. I don't know like what this what this advance is but I told him like pretty quickly up front I was like um Chris Chris and I had an actual relationship and I'm not gonna be that girl who's just dated everyone from the cast or like whatever else. It was like, if you want to try to see if we're actually compatible, we can hang out and talk and see. Um, and so that's what happened. Like after that, we were good that night. He kind of tried to kiss me at the bar and I was like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> to be honest, a few people. Um, <laughs> so that was like too soon. Like, I'm not saying that, yeah. you know? And Chris is um, there in the room yeah. too. So is he a great friend, <laughs> yeah. honestly? like what yeah so he kind of yeah I know exactly that's why I'm like I'll let everyone draw their own conclusions there but he that he, something tried to happen that night I was like no but I kind of left it I guess I would say I left the door open um to just hanging out in the future so we had like at the reunion they kind of edited it but what I was trying to explain was if I was like going out I would invite Izzy out um but we didn't plan like official dates it was never like we were dating i was just trying to get a sense of who he was as a person in the real world and it didn't take very long before i was like no i was right this is not gonna work um <laughs> wait what about it what about <laughs> yeah. izzy were you just like nah it's not gonna work like this is not compatible so the same night that we kissed like it was a make out like i'm not gonna underplay it but we were at the bars um, I hadn't driven and he was like, I'll take you home. My friend was actually there, one of my good friends. And she was like, are you sure about him taking you home? And I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, so it's, this, I was like, it's fine. Sorry to interrupt. Just to clarify, this wasn't the same night where you hung out with like Aaliyah and the male cast. No. This was a separate night. No, no. Okay. The first night we met, we did not kiss. I was, I was like, I don't know about you yet. I don't know about, that was kind of my mentality the whole time was like, I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're seeing, I'm giving you a chance because <laughs> yeah. I, my ego is low. <laughs> my self esteem is low right now. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Also, no, but... <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. uh... No, well, that's what. Well, yeah, I was just like, I was, I, I said that to him, I guess I left that out that night. I was like, you almost just got married to Stacy. Like, how am I supposed to know that you actually want an emotional connection with me right now? I don't think yeah. you are at a place where this could be a real thing. Um, that was my main yeah. thing. I was like, you almost just got married to someone else. Like, why are you coming at me right now? Yeah. Um, like the intention is hard to understand. Cause like, are you acting with a clear mind or are you just hurt kind of right? yeah. yeah and like yeah. what and the I, heck? I was like i don't want to be 
All right, I was just saying, like, you literally like, was- just got rejected at the altar, and now you're like <laughs> trying to go for you. I don't know. Yeah. He's weird. And you told me, I'm like, you told me, you told me I'm a piece of shit, and then you got rejected <laughs> yeah. at the altar, and now all of a sudden you like don't think I'm a piece of shit anymore. Like, I'm just like, okay, what is? I was like, I think we both need time to figure out what how we feel. Um, so then that night we like made out in his Jeep at the bar, but then he drove me home and we were outside of my house in his Jeep. Um, and we got in this big argument Oh, about what, like big argument. It, it started as him saying, cause I was saying, I don't trust you based off everything that happened on the show. And he was saying, I don't want, I want to sweep it all under the rug and start over. And I don't want to talk about the show anymore. I want to move on. And I was like, well, our whole relationship is based off meeting on this yeah. show. Like I yeah. can't. And the show's about like, to come out. It's still, it has still had yeah. it's not out yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, it wasn't cool. about to back then. It was a year and a half. So we. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Back but then. like it was on the horizon for sure, you know? Yeah. His whole mentality, which I do somewhat understand, was like, we need to get past it, move on. I need to know whether you trust me or not. And my whole mentality was, I don't know if I trust you yet. I don't feel great about what happened at that barbecue. All right, if we want to get into the real tea, y'all can decide if y'all want to air this or not. Milton told me that Izzy had another girl at the bachelor party. Oh, Ooh. and they didn't even air the Bachelor Bachelorettes this season. Yeah, because they cut so yeah. many damn couples out of the show. So, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So Mil- Milton, Milton told me, "Don't go for Izzy. He's not trustworthy. I don't trust him." And me being dumb, okay. The thing is, like, I can't pursue a relationship with someone without, like, I had to tell Izzy because I had to be like, "Look, these are my concerns. I need you to tell me whether I should be concerned." So I told Izzy about my conversations with Milton. Um, and then that's where shit went awry because Milton got very upset with me yeah. for airing that. And he was like, I was telling you as my bro. And I was like, well, what am I just supposed to not? I was pursuing, if I had just, Milton wanted me to just cut things off with Izzy and not have the conversation and not say that he had said anything. I was trying to actually, I was trying to pursue the connection with Izzy. So I was like, I have to figure out what's real and what's not and whether I can trust you. But Milton, Milton told me not to trust Izzy for one, which is also why Milton, Milton, I don't have a relationship anymore Mm -hmm. because he's not happy about that, which I can kind of understand. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But at the same time, it is um, again, like the telephone game it's like Milton yeah. can say that and like warn you, but you have to go to the source to figure out yeah. like what's real and what's no, but real. I was, I was getting a lot like the night, the first night we talked at the bar where he was like trying to kiss mm-hmm. me, we were in this like U shaped booth and this girl who happened to be in the booth with us was like, Hey, she was like, I went on a like a dating app date with that guy. She was like, he is a red flag. Like do not talk to him. So I was what getting it. Fuck? I was getting it from all sides, like people being like, don't trust Izzy, don't trust Izzy. And I'm like, I kind of don't already (laughs) based off my past dealings with him. So like, I think at the end of the day, the gist of it was I did not trust Izzy. And like, he was trying to like push to see if there was a connection there. And I was like, there's not. But then, so the night we got in the big fight, I'm sorry, so many tangents. The night we got in the big fight, um, I eventually realized I was like, Hey, we don't agree on this. I was like, our fight's not even about what it originally started at, which is whether we should sweep the show under the rug or not. I was like, we're just arguing to argue. I was like, I'm getting, I'm feeling a lot of, um, I was like, I'm triggered like my past patterns. And I was like, I feel like this is exactly what I said. This is my past pattern. And I looked at him and I said, I'm sorry, like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not going to do this to myself again. And I got out of his Jeep. Um, and it was very dramatic after that. I, again, won't go into it. Um, and again, he told me I was a piece of shit. Like, I was, again? was terrible. You, you, yeah. Shut up. Mm. No, I think it's like, you know what it is? I, I really feel like Izzy acts out of hurt. And same Mm. at the reunion, the reason why I feel like 
even after the reunion, he's like siding with Stacy so much is because he feels mm. rejected by Stacy and he feels mm. rejected by you in this moment. So he's at, he's retaliating. And like, it, I feel like it comes from a place of hurt. But again, who, I don't know. But that's just what I'm interpreting. No, I as. agree with that. Two weeks later, he came back with an apology again. So like, I think I give Izzy a little bit of credit because he recognizes when he's doing these things, you know, um, so it was from that point, um, two weeks later, when he gave me the apology, we were like, truth, friends, we're not pursuing rom a romantic connection. Um, I'm, I told him, like, I'm here for you. Like, I've been through, this isn't out there, but I've been through therapy for three and a half years. Like, I'm very self aware. I know what's going on with me. I see a lot of, like, my anxiety issues in you we were there for each other the past year and a half and then a couple more a um, couple months before the reunion stacy like slid, slid in and i was like izzy do you not see she's just trying to be on good terms with you for the reunion because she knows it's about the air like she did not have you in her life this whole time yes. suddenly this is about the air and now she wants to be on good terms and izzy just fell in with all that First, you guys try to pursue a relationship and then you guys were cool for a year and a half. And then Stacy slid back in, you know, try to be cordial with him. And then all of a sudden he just dislikes you when the show comes out. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. So two parts, mainly I would say that, but around the same time. So Izzy and I were cordial um, and friends. Like he would actually ask like he's saying he was asking Stacy for relationship advice. He would actually come to me for that stuff like the past mm -hmm. year and a half. And I would be very like open with him about what I thought were maybe the girl's issues and what I maybe thought were his issues. Um, but another part was I had started to distance myself out of respect for my relationship with Alex. Mm, your current boyfriend. Um, because as long as, as long as it was friends, Right. Yeah. Alex, we can get into that too. Best guy ever. But um, I, I feel like I know what's appropriate and what's not. And so I didn't have romantic feelings for Izzy. Alex knew we were cordial. Um, so we kept in contact. But when it, there was a point when Izzy and his last girlfriend broke up where I felt like it was the kind of advice he was asking for felt you know what I'm saying? When someone comes to you and it feels too intimate, yeah, it mm -hmm. kind of got to, it got to that point. And so out of respect for Alex, I didn't really say anything to Izzy. I just started withdrawing a little bit because I was like, I'm cool being friends, but I'm not your next option. If that makes sense. Like yes. I'm not, we're cordial. Like I think you're a good person. I would never want to date you. I love my boyfriend. Um, so around the same time that I was withdrawing, Stacy popped back up. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. Beca because the reunion was coming in. And I think he just has to have someone in that role as like confidant or like someone he's interested in, or I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to explain it, but he did. He told me they were hanging out. He told me like, I'm cool with both of y'all. I actually, I kind of was like, okay, good. Like go to her for advice. Like I can step back and not have to be your therapist. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it kind of felt. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, are you paying me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I was kind of like, okay, this is good. Like, um, but I didn't know up until the reunion that he was going to actually walk into the reunion and say, oh, I don't stand by my delivery, but I stand by saying she's sketchy as fuck. That's when I was just like, okay which is why i think you kind of see me at the reunion i didn't really have a response i was like okay well i thought we were cool the past year but maybe not i don't know yeah it's very strange that he consistently has stacy's back even though she also bashes him often about the whole finance you know situation um but uh yeah, yeah. that that's just very very weird and um you know uh that now you providing that contest makes it even more weird. Why is he acts the way that he does and why he says things about you in interviews? Okay. 
Let's switch gears because I am really interested to know what transpired between you and Chris. It was revealed <laughs> at the reunion that Chris cheated on you. Like, I was so pissed when I heard about this. I was, like, honestly, genuinely angry. But can you walk us through what happened? Like, what transpired? I have a lot of thoughts, but let's start there. <laughs> what happened was that barbecue, I know the whole timeline, that barbecue was on May 18th which was a Wednesday. My birthday was May 21st, that Saturday. Um, Chris had to go out of town for a wedding. He never, one, it was a red flag to me. He never invited me. Yeah. Like I probably wouldn't have been able to go, but I was like, I feel like as your girlfriend, you should like extend the invite and at least know that I'm gonna feel like, oh no, I can't do last <laughs> yeah. minute, whatever. So he goes, <laughs> he goes to the wedding. Um, the whole next week he was, I was trying to meet up with him um, and he kept telling me he was having a lot of anxiety about the show. Mm -hmm. He literally sent me a text that was like, I've dropped 15 pounds. I feel sick. I'm staying with my mom. I just don't. He was like, I have a lot of anxiety like with you and the show. And I felt terrible. So I was keeping my distance because I was like, look, I'm here for you. Let me know when you feel good to connect. Like, just trying to be very supportive, yeah. also still feeling guilty about the fact that I put him second. Um, then that Saturday, so it's Wednesday. Um, I haven't seen him. It's the following Saturday. That Saturday, I took my dog out. This is such a strange sequence of events, but I took my dog out. I ran into my neighbor, who was my good friend, and he was like asking me out for drinks. And I was like, actually, I have a boyfriend. And he was like, well, I follow you on social media. I haven't seen any boyfriend. Like, I was like, well, <laughs> I know this is weird, but like, this is modern, <laughs> modern life. Um, and I was, cause I'm actually very like open on social media too. And I was like, well, I can't post him for certain reasons. Like I was trying not to say we were on a reality TV show together. Um, and he said, what's his name? And I said, his name is Chris. And my guy friend also weird of him to admit but he was like he was like I'm not gonna lie he's like this is weird and he's like but I saw Chris comment on one of your photos and he was like I had gone to his Instagram page and I like know what he looks like and he was like I saw him today at the pool with another girl making out with her and I was oh just my God, like what are the chances <sighs> that is so no, crazy literally when this when it happened one okay I will say I'm not religious. I consider myself spiritual, Me too. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I was like, this is either like a spiritual phenomenon or they're still filming. Like, this is so weird. Like I still looking back, it's still insane to me. I, my neighbor told me my boyfriend from the show was cheating on me because he saw him with the other girl, mm -hmm. which is that's wild. Yeah. Like yeah, I so, can't like, even believe that. I mean, that's like divine intervention type of stuff. No, I feel well, like the universe is literally on your side to be like, you need to know this information. <laughs> well, I found out I was very upset, but I wasn't fully trusting of the story. So I texted Chris a very open ended text. And I said, I heard you were at the pool today. And I put dot, 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 mm. like kind of insinuating, like, I know you were there with someone else. And I wanted him to fill in the blanks. So I would have confirmation um because this is just again what someone it was telling me so he didn't answer for like it like two hours and i said are you not even going to say anything and then he sent this text back which was like i think you're amazing i just fell back to what i knew i still oh see a future gosh. with you um i just i just am having this, a lot of anxiety about you and the show um and i sent back i wish y'all the best wait he said he still because, sees a future with you so he didn't even like so did he like admit on cheating on you when he said he fell back to what he knew like what did he mean by that i'll just read you what he sent me because i feel like it fills in the blanks but okay i said so this is may 28 2022 i said so my friend saw you at the pool today dot 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 and then like an hour and 40 minutes later i said are you not even going to say anything he said i'm sorry i really am 
Everything I told you was the truth. I wanted to be with you. I see my life with you in the future and know it would be perfect. You are amazing. I don't know what it is. And I tried to work through it, but I have this anxiety with you and about the show. I just fell back to what I know and I apologize. That sounds like and a very said, stupid answer. Yeah, it make I said, sense. I said, okay, well, clearly we're over. And I said, I wish all the best. And he never responded to that text up until recently. Never responded, never act, asked, asked to speak in person. And that was the last I ever basically heard from him. Wow. He okay, is a begin, loser. He's a loser. So. Uh, like, it doesn't make any sense because he's literally contradicting himself in the in the text message. And then also at the reunion to sit there and say, oh, like my habit is basically I don't want to like let people down. I don't want to yeah. disappoint people. And listen, I'm the same way. I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing that. But this is, this is blatantly hurtful to you. It's like yeah. absolutely crazy that he thought that it was acceptable in any way and to love bomb you like that to be like oh i see a future and like even at the reunion oh, yeah. i don't know how this made you feel but i was kind of upset for him saying well i love you and it's like don't say those words that's not yeah i loved when vanessa was like well if you love somebody oh. you do this to them it's like no yeah, yeah he's a loser I agree with, with, with all of that and like what you don't see um the reason he was always number two for me is because i my intuition was telling me i didn't feel like he was all in to be honest um mm -hmm. it doesn't show but he told another girl that he loved her oh wow um, love that word <laughs> yeah so in the that's in the lounge yeah in the lounge another girl which who knows i can't say that for sure happened i'm saying i heard talk in the lounge from another girl that he had said he loved her and that made me put my walls up with him early on which is why he was even though he comes across as very nice and saying the right things i was hesitant with him and so the main thing now i'm like i should have trusted that intuition and not again like i gave to me i'm like i gave chris and izzy a chance afterward when maybe i sh i shouldn't have um i think that's yeah. okay though i think that's okay yeah. like from somebody who also dated somebody who thought i had a connection with like it just wasn't right but if you didn't try sometimes that's like you're always gonna wonder you know yeah and, and quite I honestly i wasn't sure if I could trust him or not. Yeah. And I got the answer there. So exactly. And now you're in a happy, loving relationship. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you guys seem like you are on pretty good terms, just based on your the way you conversed and um, the way you conversed at the reunion. So tell me a little bit about that. Like kind of what's your feelings towards Chris? Yeah, I think and like I didn't appreciate that, that he didn't kind of like try to discuss anything with me a year and a half ago when I found out, like I would have appreciated more of an explanation. Um, but I think part of the reason I'm so forgiving is because going into the reunion, um, I hadn't seen him in a year and a half and we were standing like behind this little veil, like about to walk on stage. And I haven't seen like, Izzy and I had been cordial, but then I knew he was like close with Stacy again. I haven't seen Stacy since the barbecue, like literally no discussion. So Chris and I are standing back there um, and I turned to him and I said, I feel like I'm walking into the lion's den. Um, mm -hmm. I was so, you might not see it, but I was so nervous. Um, and so I was just like, I need to say it. And so I said it to him and he goes, I've got you, I've got your back. I've got your back. And at that point, I was also still, um, I was very unsure about outing Chris for cheating because I was like, I don't know how this is going to go down. Like the edit, he looks so nice. Like if he doesn't admit it, I don't want it to be he said, she said. Mm. So I'm like, I have Stacy on one side. I have this guy who cheated on me on the other. I'm like balancing so many emotions. So when I'm sitting on the couch, like when you see Chris and I have that side conversation, Stacy had started to give her answer and I realized that she was not going to apologize. And I like physically was getting like 
tense and uncomfortable. And um, to Chris's credit, he could tell. And he turned to me and he said, are you okay? Oh, I was going to ask you about that. Like what you guys were whispering yeah. about while she was speaking. Was that what he was like yeah. telling you? He, well, he goes, are you okay? And in that moment, I ignored, I did ignore what Stacey was saying, but I was thinking about, um, I had outed Chris for cheating and we had never talked about it. And like, to be honest, I do feel very guilty about telling the world that he cheated on. I know that's weird, um, but I feel like I'm labeling him as like a cheater. Mm -hmm. And to, and because I do like, people are so multidimensional that I was like, I felt really bad about how, but I was like, I knew they were gonna ask why we ended. And I, so I was like, I just have to be honest. And so when he turns to me and he goes, are you okay? I immediately, I said, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Cause you and wanted he to was like, him. Yeah. I said, I'm so sorry. And he said, it's your truth. It's okay. It's your truth. And I was like, I know I'm just, I was like, I know I'm so sorry. Like I, I said that too. I think I was like, I just have to be honest. I don't know what else to do. Like, cause I didn't even know like how, what else to tell them about why we like, that's why we had broken up. And I knew they were going to say like, why did you break up? What am I supposed to be like? I didn't really like the guy. Like there exactly. wasn't, that's like, not incompatibility. Honest. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was genuinely in love with him. So I was like, I don't know what to say other than the truth. Um, and then he goes, I don't know what Stacy said. And I was like, I don't either. It doesn't matter, <laughs> which that's kind of, that's kind of petty. But like, I did know like she wasn't going to fall. Like it was clear from how she started that it was going to be like a PR speech about why she thinks I deserved what I got. And I was like, I really don't need to listen to you. Tell me why you think I deserve the treatment you gave me again. So yeah. maybe it was disrespectful, but I also, to be honest, I don't think she deserved the respect. Um, yeah. Again, it speaks to how you need context to understand. And that's why I'm so excited that we got to talk to you today, because that was one of the things I was like, it did come off a little disrespectful in the way that they edited it too. But mm -hmm. I understand your perspective now. And if someone's just sitting next to you trying to comfort you, you're not going to ignore them. You're just like, oh, hey, like, I it's okay. I'm doing okay. Hey, especially when yeah. she's like attacking you. So I totally to get it. It was more important to me because Chris and I don't talk. So it's not like that we have this relationship behind scene. Like I have a sniffing other, he has a sniffing other, like we don't talk that much. So it was more important to me in that moment to be like, I said it, I'm sorry. I hope you can understand that I just need to tell my truth and like us clear that moment than it was for me to hear. Like I, I at the end of the day, I, I knew what Stacey was going to say say by the beginning of her her speech and that's why I still responded to it um but yeah yeah it's I, been a lot uh, that's a lot yeah so I don't know so I keep my subtitles on on my Netflix so like the first time or when I watched it I couldn't see what Chris and I were saying yeah, but the dude. weird thing is if you turn the subtitles off then like they actually show like the oh. love is blind or netflix people actually oh. put what yeah so it's the opposite if you don't put the sub the subtitles show what stacy and izzy are saying okay that's but if what you turn it off it shows it shows chris and i's conversation you can see he um it doesn't show him initiating it saying like are you okay but it shows me being like i'm so sorry and then chris is like you were just telling your truth you're just telling your truth and I was like, I know, but I'm still so sorry. I missed that. And then he's I had like, my subtitles on because I was on the plane. So yeah, I I always have my subtitles on, so I didn't see it. So I actually saw it on like another page that reposted it. They were like, by the way, here the here are the subtitles for Chris and Johnny's conversation. And everyone was like, oh, we thought they were talking shit about Stacy. They were just like making up that's what I thought. or like being cordial yes. <laughs> on the side. But that's oh so man, I um. Well, you know, I'm so glad that you came on this podcast because I think you provided a lot of context that was missing. I think that kinetic content in Netflix mm -hmm. is trying to like rehabilitate Izzy's image just because he is on Perfect Match season two. Um, and, and so mm -hmm. I think they it seems like they cut a lot of like a lot of your story, which would have made a little bit more sense, though. I do feel like most viewers yeah. are 
I, you know, I hate saying sides, but are mostly on your side anyways. Um, but it yeah. seems like you're very like forgiving and empathetic. And I think that's always like refreshing to see because we know how stressful it is to be on yeah. this show. Um, especially when you're dealing with, you know, this ongoing tension with Stacy and Izzy and maybe other castmates. Um, and especially what you went yeah. through with Chris, like, uh, if I was in your shoes, I think I would have ripped him a new one at the reunion, but good for you for <laughs> keeping, you know, staying graceful. Um, cause I know I wouldn't be yeah. able to, um, but we have two more questions for you. Tell us about your new relationship. Yeah. Tell us about your boyfriend, Alex. Uh -huh. Oh, he's, um, I feel like the girl who cried wolf at this point. It's like, I can't, <laughs> I can't say like someone or people are like, you're not allowed to be in love again. <laughs> no, but <laughs> The internet's a wild place. <laughs> it is a wild place. Like, I didn't go on the show looking for love. Um, no, but um, let's see. We met on Bumble. Okay. So I sent him a voice message. It's the first and only voice message I've ever sent. Um, so I do, like, we know the pods are everything they are. But, like, I guess one thing I did learn was, like, you get a lot more. You can tell a lot more about who someone is by their voice and like how their confidence level, their mannerisms right. through their voice versus a text message. Mm -hmm. So I sent the voice message. He sent one back and I was like, Oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds nice and confident. Um, yeah. So that was um, all good. He gives me crap because he says I swipe left on him five times before <laughs> we, we met. <laughs> Like I, used to, apps, I used to or... delete the app. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, let, okay. Let me, I have Hinge and Bumble, and I would delete them, like, once every, like, one to two months because I would just be like, oh, I'm tired of this. Yeah, I don't know if y'all yeah. been through this. No, I, <laughs> I don't I even have, get on but... dating apps anymore because I'm like, I can't. <laughs> Since before Love is Blind, I haven't been back on. <laughs> no, because, yeah. So I would delete them and be like, I'm taking a break. And then, so I met Alex. Like, I had – um Chris and I had had our thing and had been at like three or four months. I was like, I'm going to get back on Bumble. Um, sent him a voice message. His back was like super sweet. We met um, the first date and I would say like, maybe he won't like me saying this. I would say it made a lot of sense on paper. Um, and I was like, but I'm not getting the like chemistry reaction. And it, but then like, that's what I learned. It's like, I walked out and I was like, wait, this is how it should be. I was like, like I, yeah, I was like, I don't know this person yet. I shouldn't be having a strong emotional reaction. I shouldn't be attaching to them. I shouldn't feel anxiety. Um, so just like a very normal first date, a very normal second date, our third date, we like pack, um, which I think I actually initiated. And then it just like slowly progressed from there uh he's an aerospace engineer at nasa oh, uh, wow um, <laughs> yeah that's he's incredible just like yeah so like he's all like that's what I'm like i guess i just realized like i need to actually like i was saying all the things i wanted but then when i would get into a date like with izzy or someone else it's like all that would fall by the wayside and i would put blinders on but I was like, no, I was saying I was looking for someone intelligent and dependable and funny. Um, and he's all of those things. Um, definitely healthiest relationship I've ever been in. We're very secure. I told him everything about the show beforehand. Um, because of everything I went through, I was a little concerned that he was going to judge me based off other people's perception of me or like the edit um not at all he's like I know who you are like no one else's opinion is going to change my opinion of you um oh, he's just been such amazing. a rock through all this yeah honestly he's why when people were like at the reunion they're like you seem so calm I was like every time I would like put myself back to a year and a half ago and get worked up I would just be like wait let me take a step back it's it's October 2023 I'm in the best relationship of my life I have a good career. I have good friends. If I don't like, none of this is relevant to me anymore. Like, yes, 
That's exactly the feeling that I got when Chris was like talking to you about the cheating stuff and you were just like, it's mm -hmm. okay. Like I, I yeah. cause enough time will pass and you're in a good place in your life. And yeah, one important thing that I did like that you said is um, this, there's this like post about old people like giving advice. And one of them was marry the person that keeps you calm and like yeah. instead of like, giving you that like crazy chemistry whatever emotion so yeah no well that's what I guess I should clarify because like now I very much have that like crush feeling on him if that makes sense like mm -hmm. he also like I'm an introvert he doesn't drain my social battery at all like that is such a huge thing for me like for me yeah like I don't know how to explain that but like if i date someone and like being around you doesn't drain my social battery like i can just be comfortable be my full self um i do have a crush like 100 percent the person like i've most been in love with been most comfortable with in my life and like i jokingly said in an interview they did an interview after their union um oh, i guess i didn't tell you all this he was recruited for love is blind crazy and what? <laughs> Yeah, so he was recruited, um, which, so when I told him I was on the show, he was like, oh, I was recruited. And he was like, I could never propose to someone that quickly. Like, he's very practical. And so I said in that interview, like, after the reunion, I was like, well, how long is it going to take? <laughs> and yeah. they just, I thought it, I thought it was going to be a video interview and it was print. So it just says, like, <laughs> me being like, well, how long is it going to take? And I was like, oh, I got to send this to Alex. So he's going to be like, what are you saying, what are you oh, saying in the media? Funny. Like, I've got to, yeah. That but is he, crazy. Um, I think we both, yeah, we both, like, we've talked about it since. And he's like, it's not a matter of if, but when we lived together, um, oh, he moved okay. in. He Sweet. moved in last, yeah, he moved in last month. Um the same time the show was airing and i was like here we go two big life changes at once mm -hmm. um but it's been the best thing like i thought it could go either way but he's like i said he's been such a support system he's so understanding um i think we're like closer and better than ever so yeah i expect no i'm like no he's gonna listen to this i'm gonna say expect a proposal <laughs> 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 You've already taken the step of moving in together and weirdly it's kind of great because it kind of coincided with the show coming out. So you had a support yeah. system, you yeah. know, but what is, what's next for you, Johnny? What do you have any like upcoming goals? What can we do? We, can we see something in the future from you? Would you do any more reality shows? <laughs> um, definitely no more reality shows. I learned, <laughs> I learned my lesson there. Um, I would say I'm, I've never been the type of person to have long-term plans. I know that sounds weird, but I guess you all know a little bit about my background from this show. Just like having lost someone, I live very much, like I still try to be responsible, but I live very much in, in the moment and like day to day. And right now I'm very happy with my career. I'm happy with Alex. Um, I'm trying to ignore a lot of the negative talk about people who don't know me for who I am um and yeah i just hope if anything like if i get a platform from the show like i just hope i can help people who have been through similar situations um know that yeah it's okay like i don't think i like i guess i think the stereotype of like people who have dealt with people who have um addiction issues is maybe like lower class or like lower middle class and like um i i wouldn't say like i'm super wealthy but i was raised um definitely like with a family who provided everything i needed so i don't think there's a lot of like um people out there speaking on having experienced a lot of trauma in the middle class if yeah. that makes sense um yeah. Or like addiction issues aren't like people on the streets. It's yeah. not like just like homeless people. Like a lot of this is happening to a lot of people right now. And like, I just hope people know they're not alone and then that's okay. And it's not something to be judged about. Um, and that's what I knew. Like, 
I did go into this looking for significant other, but I also like, it's not like anyone is unaware that it's a show. So like yeah. in the back of my mind, I was just like, I hope I can help someone else feel seen, you know? Yeah. You absolutely will. There's at least one person out there that <laughs> sees you for who you are and has learned from you and relates to you. And that's the beauty yeah. of going on the show. So <laughs> just know that that is 100% has yeah. happened. Well, yeah. thank you so much. So. That'll make it all be worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, we appreciate you coming on. So thank you very much. <laughs> We're really excited for people to hear your story. And we hope you come again soon. Thank you. I will. I'll come. I'll come be a guest next time you're in Asia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please do. All right. Talk, talk on the happier topic. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. All right. Bye. You guys know we love, love, love hearing all of your thoughts and your comments. Please send them to our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Wednesday. Bye.